grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, welcome uh, back to our second uh, uh, Sunday uh, back to worship. Uh, here in this uh, beloved and sacred space. Um, it's been uh, a busy week in the life of the world. Um, new, new restrictions of gathering uh, announced late yesterday, which sort of threw um, me into a bit of a panic. Uh, but it turns out that um, organized events like this one with proper controls and all of that sort of thing are permissible. Um, so uh, welcome and thank you for uh, reading your, your parish emails uh, late uh, yesterday. Um, also, uh, today uh, is Joan Carter's birthday. Um, she's hiding in the back. And we can't sing to her or for her, um, but let's give her a round of applause for Yes, Joe, we're talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, this week uh, we uh, mourned, uh, we joined the world in mourning the passing of um, several people uh, important in Canadian uh, political life uh, and one um, American. Uh, so, Eileen Chrétien, um, Jean Chrétien's um, wife, uh, has died. Um, uh, Prime Minister John Turner. Uh, has died. Uh, as well, uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died as well. Uh, and so let us uh, hold their families in our prayers this week uh, as, we, uh, as we are in prayer. Uh, our service continues in your uh, order of service. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and ourselves in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning at the second verse. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh post and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. 
In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against him. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hear now a selection from Psalm 5. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak about his populous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. O offspring of Abraham his servant, O children of Jacob his chosen, he led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of him. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked, and quails appeared, and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock, and the water flowed, so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ. For that is far better, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no, no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw that I had, and now hear that I still have. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church.
words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Uh, please be seated. Just not fair, is it? You can almost hear the, the kids stamping their feet as they say, it's not fair, it's not fair. Why should it be that those who arrive with just enough time to unpack and then repack the tools of the vine dresser's trade get the full usual daily wage? What about those who have labored all day in the hot sun? Where's the sense of proportionality? Should go without saying that the person who works longer should get the larger pay packet, shouldn't it? The work of those longest serving, especially, questioned the fairness of the landowner in his hiring and his payment practices. It isn't hard to see how the workers would feel hard done by. After all, we live in an age of, of pay equity. People are supposed to get equal pay for work of equal value. Implicit in that, though, is the reality that people get paid less for work that is less equal. We have ordered our society, or tried to, around the principle of fairness. We've dedicated some of the best minds of our time to the project of assembling charters and, and other laws to protect this principle. I think here of uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and all of the years that she devoted to, to arbitrating these sorts of disputes. We are a society that values fairness. We don't always get it. But we, we have this image in our head of being a fair society. From a very young age, children get fixated on the idea of fairness. Uh, I was speaking with my father this weekend, and, and he reminded me of uh, a story. Uh, again, he talks about it often, actually. Um, he, he's one of 12 siblings. Um, uh, Irish Catholic uh, farming family um, in Perth County. Um, and he has a scar on his arm um, that, that arose or that you know, he acquired um, in the midst of a rather heated discussion about a piece of pie at dinner uh, when he was a child. Uh, this particular Sunday dinner, uh, he spied an extra piece of pie and went to take it for himself. He was rather quickly and rather painfully reminded of uh, the fact that in a household with that many people in it, um, there was not likely to be much extra anything, um, and certainly not any extra pie. Um, the scar has faded a bit over the years, um, but the lesson on fairness has remained, and, and he still preaches uh, the gospel of fairness uh, at any chance he gets. And in human relationships, fairness isn't, isn't a bad goal at all. But Jesus rarely speaks about human relationships in, in straight-ahead sort of terms. He's continually speaking about the way things ought to be, or about the way things will be in the fully realized kingdom of God. There's lots of strangeness in the parable that we heard today that the apparent unfairness of the wage distribution is certainly at the top of the list, but also the landowner going out and hiring his own day labor would have been pretty unusual at the time. It would be, well, are any Downton Abbey fans here? I know it's been off, but I've, I still watch the repeats, so um, it would sort of be like Lord Crawley coming down out of the manor house and into the square of the little village there, and then hiring his downstairs maids. Like, it's just not his job to do that. The proper person to be doing the work of, of hiring and firing and managing uh, employees would be the manager that had called in at the end of the parable uh, to dispense the pay packets. 
He is a, a decidedly more hands-on landowner than most. And the fact is, in parables, we get to cast people in, in, the, uh, in the various roles. And if the landowner is God, then our God is indeed more hands-on than most would reasonably expect. Hopefully you'll recall from the, the second creation story in Genesis that the hands of a God molding the first human out of the clay of the earth. His hands all over the high point of his creation, which is all of us. From a God who knows us intimately, it really is the established pattern that he has walked into the marketplace of human existence and pressed us into service at the time of God's choosing. The hour of our arrival into the vineyard is not a moment too late in the eyes of the one who owns it. Those workers in Jesus' story arrived just as they were needed. Not a moment too late, nor too early, as the account says. The workers in this vineyard, the kingdom of God, that has broken open in this world, arrive as called, and not a moment too early, nor a moment too late. The wage, that unit of exchange for the labor given, is handed over to each of us, each worker. The usual daily wage. For a worker in that time, it was a living wage, adequate for feeding, housing, and providing for a family, including its religious obligations. They weren't getting rich out of it, but they had enough. The social contract of the day provided that a worker who was paid this usual daily wage could provide for his family. Our God, in the great reconciliation at the end of days has promised us enough. Enough of the wages of righteousness, a full measure of God's grace. Imagine with me what a full measure of God's grace would be. The forgiveness of all of our transgressions. Yes, all of them. Even that one you just thought of that you don't tell anybody about, you've never told me about, about the person beside you, you're hiding it from yourself, that one's forgiven too. And then, on top of that, the unity of us to God forever, for eternity. Everything forgiven and washed away for all of eternity. What, quite frankly, what more could you want? It is a fact that people regularly sort of understand and appreciate God's strange calculus of grace as it applies to ourselves. But quite often we fear and resent it when we see God's grace being applied to other people. And we can resent it as much as we want. And that transgression, too, shall be forgiven. But it really isn't for us to understand the calculus that God applies to our lives. It's also not for us to know when we, or anyone else, has been pressed into service in the vineyard. We're meant to come when we're called, and work for the kingdom until it's paid. And then we're meant to collect our wage, which is an eternity in the very presence of God with all of our sins and transgressions having already been free. And what more could we ask? Indeed, the story does tell us that some will ask for more. But the fact is, what could you do with more if you had it? So let us all go from this place confident of our call to the work of the kingdom, knowing that we have been called perhaps to an earlier shift than those who will come after us. 
aware that we have been entrusted with the care and tending of God's vineyard until he comes to settle it. Let us go then in the sure hope that enough has been provided. Eternity with God, forgiven of all. Let us pray. O God, from your providing hand, even the dissatisfied and grumbling receive what they need for their lives. Teach us your ways of justice and lead us to practice your generosity so that we may live a life worthy of the gospel made known through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Seeking no reward but the faithful service of God, 
We pray it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and is infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us now confess our sins, confident of God's grace. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And just a reminder to stay planted where you are and rotate and, and uh, share the peace of Christ uh, without, uh, without contact.
as only one for you, a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Thanks be to God.
Standing as you are able, let us pray. Ruler of the universe, all creation yearns for its fulfillment in your soul. May we who have shared in holy things grow into maturity in him. This we ask in the name of the saint, Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to God, who is power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a, a reminder um, that um, due to the requirements to have uh, a separate entrance and exit, uh, the exit will be over here um, after David has uh, concluded his posting. So uh, please do uh, be seated um, and enjoy uh, David um, in his uh, retirement offering uh, of the post. Please be seated. 